plan B. What if I failed plan A? I failed intubation. So uh, my mission now to maintain the oxygenation of the patient, and we have two options to do this. Laryngeal mask, this is a plan B, and the classic face mask ventilation, this is plan C. Usually we use the eye gel or the second generation device. It's recommended to be used for maximum of three attempts. If we succeed to do the insertion of laryngeal mask, okay, that's fine. Just stop and think and take a decision. Should I keep it in place and wake the patient up? If this is the safest option, do it without hesitation. Don't take the risk. Or if you want to proceed with it or to intubate through it or to do tracheostomy and crico or cricothyroidotomy. But if we failed that option, we need to rescue oxygenation by plan C, the face mask ventilation. Two-person technique, of course, with some airway adjuncts, oropharyngeal or nasopharyngeal airway, whatever. If we succeed, keep giving the face mask ventilations and reverse the effect of anesthesia and the muscle relaxant and wake the patient up. If we failed, now declare Kiko without delay. Can't intubate, can't oxygenate scenario and move directly to front of neck axis. This is for anesthesia. For ICU patients, it is the same exactly, but the only difference is that we do plan P and C together, not as two distinct steps like this. So we try first with plan B one once, and then if we failed, we do some face mask ventilation, two-person technique, and go back to try for the second time with laryngeal mask, and then if we failed, we give face mask ventilation two-person technique for some time and then try the third time to insert laryngeal mask. If we failed, we give face mask for some time and if we failed both of them, declare can't intubate, can't oxygenate and proceed for front of neck axis. It's done like vortex technique. Vortex. Because the same reason, the ICU patient nature his, he can't tolerate to wait until you try to insert the laryngeal mask for three times. So, you have one trial and then give him face mask ventilation to try to risk oxygenation anyway. Then go back again for the second time and then give the face mask ventilation. Go back for the third time and the last time and then face mask ventilation. Then uh, will declare Kiko, can't intubate, can't oxygenate and move to the front of neck axis. I'm uh, very interested in uh, the third option. Sorry, the second option. What if, let's imagine that um, I have the laryngeal mask in place successfully and I can oxygenate the patient. Now I want to intubate the trachea through the laryngeal mask. How can I do that? We have for this situation what's called N3 catheter, the blue colored one. Just feed the uh, fiber optic bronchoscopy with the N3 catheter, then introduce both of them through the laryngeal mask inside the airway, like this. Both of them through the laryngeal mask inside the airway. Until you see the carina, then take the bronchoscope out, leaving the N3 catheter inside the airway through the laryngeal mask. Then take the laryngeal mask out, leaving the N3 catheter alone. And by the way, we can oxygenate the patient through the N3 catheter, so there are no worries about that. The last step, to feed the uh, endotracheal tube through the N3 catheter, but you have to do this step under vision not blindly like this. This is wrong. Not blindly. It's not quite safe for the patient. Just do it under vision with direct or video laryngoscopy and see with your own eyes the tube sliding inside the airway over the entry catheter. Then remove the entry catheter and viola we have the endotracheal tube inside the airway. 
If we failed plan B and plan C, we will move finally to plan D, the emergency front of neck axis. All we need to do is scalpel, bougie, and the tube size 6. That's it. Before this step, we have to maximize the muscle paralysis by giving uh, additional doses of uh, muscle relaxants. We need to make sure the patient is paralyzed effectively before uh, trying the front of neck axis. Then let's, all steps are written here, but let's see this quick video explaining how to do it. A standard Frova bougie with a 15 millimeter RapiFit connector, a size 6 endotracheal tube, and a size 10 scalpel blade are required for this technique. The non dominant hand identifies and stabilizes the cricothyroid membrane. When the cricothyroid membrane cannot be identified, the trachea may be used as an alternative location, but only if it is easily palpable. Using the dominant hand, a stab incision is made into the skin and the underlying airway using a size 10 scalpel with the sharp edge towards you. After feeling a pop as the blade enters the airway, gentle traction should be applied to the scalpel before it is rotated 90 degrees with the blade sharp edge ending up pointing cowardly. While maintaining perpendicularity, the blade should be pulled towards the anesthetist, producing a triangular hole in the skin and underlying airway. The operator should now switch hands so that the non dominant hand now holds the bougie parallel to the floor, pointing away from the anesthetist. The tip of the bougie is then inserted into the airway whilst maintaining contact with the scalpel blade and using the blade. So blade, bougie, and then tube. Blade, bougie, tube technique. We got this triangular hole by the blade, then we'll introduce the bougie inside. It's a guide into the opening of the airway. It is usual to feel a pop as the bougie enters the airway. The bougie then needs to be rotated and aligned with the airway before it is advanced into the trachea and be felt. If tracheal again performed with gentle two finger pressure only, bag oxygenation to hold the bougie tube is then advanced over the bougie. While the non-dominant hand stabilizes the trachea, the dominant hand guides the tube using a continual 360 degree rotation technique to allow for smooth insertion of the tube into the airway. Note that we no longer recommend jetting down a bougie. Okay, that was how to do front of neck access. For me personally, I, I, I haven't done this before in practical life, but um, I was trained to do so in airway workshops and courses. Um, at least we have to know how to do it. Uh, it's going to put us in a better situation, uh, much better than not to do anything for the patient and lose him, I guess. So finally, to summarize the whole guideline again, we have now a clear brain map about what we should do in difficult airway situations. Plan A is the classic intubation. If successful, confirm position by capnography. If not, we need to maintain oxygenation. So we have the laryngeal mask option. If we succeed, Stop and think, what's next? Wake the patient up or use it to intubate the trachea or just to proceed with it or do tracheostomy or cricothyroidotomy. If we fail to insert the laryngeal mask, we need to move to the face mask ventilation. If we succeed, well and good, wake the patient up. If not, declare Kiko without delay, without delay. Can't intubate, can't oxygenate and uh, just go for emergency front of neck axis directly. This is plan D steps as you saw by on the video.
and this is the same guideline for the ICU patients with the differences uh, we mentioned before for the way of oxygenation with CPAP and NIV and uh, the way we are doing plan C, B and C together in a vortex way for three times each the, before proceeding uh, for can't intubate, can't oxygenate uh, to do front of neck access. So finally, uh, I believe that medical practice after COVID-19 um, uh, would be completely different from the practice before COVID-19. Uh, here are some smart ideas about dealing through barriers with COVID-19 patients. And um, uh, I can imagine that the video laryngoscopy uh, in such situations would be more appropriate than uh, using direct laryngoscopy in such situations, if you agree with me. I hope uh, you can find uh, some benefit from this presentation. And uh, finally, I would recommend strongly just to book a workshop uh, or airway course uh, just to uh, post your skills uh, regarding the practical part of airway uh, assessment and airway management uh, in general and to try to practice uh, all plans plan a b c and d uh, through workshops anywhere just to combine the theoretical knowledge with the practical part of airway management thank you very much